Hi there, Dr. Gary here on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. We are dental practice brokers and been doing this for 13 years. I was a dentist for 25. Today's topic is, does the buyer or seller have any liability of pulling out of a deal that's in progress moving forward, even if it's at the last minute. And that happens sometimes. We get buyers that get cold feet and sellers that go feet, cold feet. Let's talk about that today. Uh, but as you know, we're in 28 states. We have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants. We're uh, available to you eight to nine o'clock every day east coast time we work 363 days a year and we are available to you so please call us now our phone number is 201-663-0935 email is dentalpracticeguide.com for the website or nationwide dentalpracticebrokers.com we're available to you and just give us a ring and we'll be here to help you out. Now all this information that you're hearing is for entertainment purposes. It's not legal or business advice. Also, if you're thinking about selling to a DSO, large corporate, you're above 1.6 million and six operatories or more. They're out there buying. We're also getting groups that are looking in that 900 to 1.3 million dollar range but they're not DSO and then there's private ones also under a million dollars there's still plenty of those available when we work with the DSO we generally will uh, uh, try to choose the best one for you we're independent often they will pay our commission so there's no commission for you so you have nothing to lose because we're in the middle trying to help negotiate we can talk to everybody but they'll often pay our commission and when you work with us, sometimes uh, based on criteria, we can also get legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing. So give us a ring because we'll tell you about that program. We've done that several times. In addition, the, uh, the topic today is if you're in a transaction with a buyer, and I'd say deeply into it. The average sale takes 45 days from, and sometimes much longer due to the problems with landlord, all kinds of issues. But it takes about 45 days. And if you're in, uh, now it depends, did you sign a contract or not at this point? Like example, a state of New Jersey, you have to sign a contract before you go to closing because it has to be uh, sent into the bulk sales tax is what they call it has to be done at least uh, and it takes 10 days to do that waiting at the state do you want to get that in so are you in contract or not answer that question if you're in contract and you change your mind that you don't want to sell you don't want to buy you have some legal issues going on your attorney will advise you accordingly but if a contract has not been signed and you just have a letter of intent which is non-binding well you are expected to go to closing and and since the success rate is so high in the sale of a dental office, I don't know why you would back out. Usually it's because of cold feet. Buyer gets nervous or the seller decides they don't want to sell. Uh, but it's always best off if all parameters are within normal region. You should definitely be selling. Buyers should be definitely buying. Why? Because it's a seller's market right now. So therefore, for the buyer, there's not that many opportunities for you. There aren't a lot of great dental practices that are available to limited supply. And the buyer, you have a 99.275% success rate. You're not going to fail. So even if it's a practice you may not be crazy about, chances are that you're going to be very successful there. Just keep your eyes open for another one in the future. You have a satellite office. And for the seller... Well, it's only right for the buyer. He's put a lot of time and effort in. He's a pre-qualified buyer. He's ready to go to closing. You, the seller, are afraid or panic last minute, like you don't know what you want to do with yourself, or you think you can get more money. That's ridiculous. You could get disabled. You could have a flood in your building. could go on fire. We've dealt with a few fires in dental offices. Anything could happen to you as a seller. But disability and trauma and damage to the office is certainly a possibility. 
or you yourself, I deal with so many disabilities, usually twice a month. I've got all the stories. So maybe you have a lot of information, you as a seller, or you think you know more than me, it's possible. I'm learning every day. But I've done hundreds of transactions over 13 years. I was a dentist for 25 years, and I've been doing this for 13 years. I think I have a little bit of knowledge to share, maybe a little bit more than you, maybe a little bit more experience, uh, and I could share that. Um, if you think because you've done five closings, six closings, maybe that you know everything now, well, that's great. Because I can't do that after hundreds of transactions. It's always a new surprise to me. So I think if you're into it, you should just consider uh, getting this practice. Just go through the mode. Just go through it. Get it closed. Don't sit back, relax, and uh, think that... Uh, you're going to get a better deal elsewhere. You'll lose the first buyer, and then you find another buyer who hypes you up and says they're going to pay you more money just to get the deal, and then they don't go through. You lose the second buyer. You lose the first buyer. Don't do it. So is there a liability is the question. Generally not. Generally, there isn't a lot of liability uh, unless you've signed the dental contract already. Now, you'll check this with your attorney, whatever. But in the dental deals... You know, it's hard enough to put a deal together. Historically, it's going to go through and the buyer wants it to go through. You as a seller should let it go. Or don't put your practice on the market. Or just don't even put it on the market. I mean, if you're not sure what you want to do, forget it. I think you'd be making a huge mistake by not putting it on the market because of what I know about disability, um, fire, floods, everything could happen. You're just, as a seller, you're basing on seven, on 35 years of smooth sailing. You figure, well, I'll just go another year. No, it doesn't work that way. There's too many problems out there. You sell at the top of your game when you're, you know, the age is up there. Even if you're not, you're selling at the top of your game in that you're preserving the principle of your practice. And then a buyer, if you have fear, that you're not going to get, you're not going to be able to be successful. You don't know what you want to do. You're shaking in your boots, and you got a great job with the DSO. Believe me, you're losing so much on available income through, you know, tax write-offs and such, that uh, you're making a big mistake. You lose your autonomy as a bar. You're not working on your dream. You're working on somebody else's dream. Um, just move on. If you don't like the practice as a buyer, okay. You know, work it for a couple years. You can put associates in there and then pick up another practice. Or or work, get the practice, have ownership, and then begin looking for another practice. Now you have steady income. Now if you get disabled, you can bring your buddies in. I mean, it's all there. And that's what you should be doing. Just get the deal done. Don't start harping on this. And if you want to buy a second practice, go ahead, buy a second one. Maybe after a year, you'll find a second one. Or you think the perfect one comes along and then somebody else buys it under your feet. Again, you don't have the liability. If you pull away, I don't suggest it. And if, you know, the, the attorneys and the brokers see that you're the type that always pulls out last second, people are going to be less inclined to sell to you. You just don't want to do that. You get cold feet all the time. Well, you know, maybe you're not ready. And I understand that. I think you are ready. We were buying practices six months out of residency program. We had some doctors building offices before they graduated. That's how confident they were. They were going to get state licensed and everything. So you will be successful. It will work out well. Uh, but you don't have that liability if you do pull it out. Hopefully you don't. But maybe you'll have a certain circumstances, trauma in your life. You have to pull out and you didn't sign a contract. Usually you can get out of it. Same thing with the seller. There could be a traumatic experience and you decide you, know, you can't sell the practice now. Uh, then maybe you can get out too with no liability. But you'll speak to your attorney for guidance on that. We're just telling you what our, our experiences are. We've had two recent buyers that just got cold feet right before closing. Right before closing. Why? It was, uh, I think, the green, inexperienced. Maybe they bought one or two practices or looked at a few of them. Then they just panicked last minute. They defaulted onto their history of working for somebody else and having a great job with the DSO. What they don't realize is for the DSO, you get hurt on a Friday, you're not going to work Monday. Your income goes to zero. So now, 
if you're a buyer and you own a practice, your buddies can come help you jump in there. So there's, you know, there's alternatives. So please give us a call to discuss these things. We're available to you. Check our website. We always have new practices for sale. Thank you so much for listening. We'll speak to you soon. Hit the like button if you like this information and we'll get it out to you. Thank you, Michael.